Hi, my name is Muhammad Fakir Hazid. Today, me and my group members, Liana, and also Azamuddin, would like to introduce you guys to environmental management accounting. I hope you guys stay tuned and stay focused and enjoy our presentation. So let us start with the definition of environmental management accounting. So basically, environmental management accounting or EMA can be defined as the identification, collection, estimation, analysis, internal reporting, and the use of material and energy flow of information, environmental cost information, and other cost information for both conventional and environmental decision making within an organization. So basically, this type of information it is uh, crucial for managers to uh, make decision for corporate activity that make that affects um, the environmental as well as um, for the or for the overall organization as a whole. So depending on the type of organization, environmental impact could include production effluents, recycling, water and power consumption, and also carbon footprint. So next, we will move on to the category of environmental cost. So here, I will explain briefly on the four type of category of environmental cost, and this type of cost will be further explained by other groups uh, under total quality management. So the first one is prevention cost. So, prevention costs associate with preventing adverse environmental impacts. And the second one is appraisal costs. So, appraisal cost is the cost of assessing compliance with environmental policies. Third one is internal failure cost. So, this cost is the cost of eliminating environmental impact that have been created by the organization. And lastly, we have external failure costs. So this cost incurred after environmental damage has been caused outside the organization. So this is uh, basically the type of cost that um, uh, uh, organization shall need to be considered um, to avoid any legal claims by either the government or the society and to avoid any tarnish of reputation of the organization. All right, next we have the managing of environmental costs. So under this um, category, we have the we have three. So the first one would be the awareness of society on environmental issue. So society as a whole has become more environmental aware with all of these environmental costs and also environmental awareness that organizations have. So with people becoming more and more aware of this carbon footprint and recycling taking place now in many countries so um, organizations need to be more emphasized and more focused on um, uh, managing the resources well to avoid any wastage and also pollution all of that stuff um, um, to help them with the uh, managing of environmental costs and also to avoid any, any legal claims by the organization by the um, society and also by the government. Next one, we have the significance of environmental costs. So environmental costs are become huge for some companies. In some cases, these costs can amount to more than 20% of the operating cost. Such significant costs need to be managed. Okay, um, for this type of um, environmental costs, uh, Azamuddin will uh, explain uh, a bit more detail on what type of uh, environmental cost we are talking about. So basically, um, these environmental costs are categorized as operating costs, which um, some companies have significant amount in the operating costs. So basically, these environmental costs need to be uh, well implemented and also be, need to be well aware by most of organizations, depending on the industry. And last, severe penalties. Regulation is increasing worldwide at a rapid pace. So with penalties being implemented for non-compliance and also um, 
some companies could find themselves facing criminal pros prosecution for knowingly breaching environmental regulation. Um, so lately, uh, we have been known that um, penalties will be imposed to those organizations or those um, operations that has been uh, related to uh, to polluting the environment or uh, cause uh, harm by um, producing uh, toxic and chemicals uh, ingredients substance in their product so basically uh, all the organization need to be well aware that these uh, penalties can cost them delays uh, so uh, managing environmental costs needed to be taken considerably to avoid any of this legal action to be taken on, on them okay now let us move on to the techniques to allocate environmental costs so under this subtopic we have four techniques to allocate environmental costs accordingly so the first one being the input or outflow analysis so basically this technique records material inflows and balances it with outflows on the basis that what comes in must go out by accounting uh, for output in this way, both in terms of physical quantities and at the end of the process in monetary terms, business are forced to focus on environmental costs uh, much more um, focusedly. So, for example, like we have uh, 100 ton of um, raw material, and also this, those, those raw material must be 100% utilized in order to avoid any wastage any uh, unnecessary cost incurred. So basically this unnecessary cost incurred will um, take it into consideration by the management as the environmental cost. So to minimize um, any further environmental cost incurred. And next one we have flow cost accounting. So flow cost accounting divides the material flows into three categories. Material, syst material um, system and delivery and disposal so the values and costs for each of these um, three flows are calculated the aim of this uh, flow cost accounting is to reduce quantity of material which as well as having a positive effect on the environment should have a positive effect on the business total uh, cost in the long run so basically they take into consideration the cost um, in the material in the system and also on the distribution part of the process so basically um, they take into consideration all the, this uh, uh, flow and also uh, record any cost, all of the cost incurred and determine the environmental cost in it or as long as the wastage cost of each of this flow to reduce it accordingly. So we move on to the third part which is life cycle costing. So basically for this life cycle costing, uh, we take a look on the context of in the environmental accounting so life cycle costing is a technique which requires the full environmental consequences uh, and therefore the causes uh, arising from production of a product to be taken across a its whole life cycle literally from the cradle to the grave. So basically we take a look on the um, cost that you could uh, starting from the acquisition of raw material to the production to the packaging to the distribution uh, uh, marketing segment or the after sales service all of this uh, need to be considered and determine um, the cost that impact the environmental um, uh, accordingly and so this is uh, so this um, cost will be identified and eliminated um, slowly uh, to reduce the environmental cost of care by the company. And next, we have activity based costing. So basically, EDC allocates internal costs to their respective cost centers and also its cost drivers on the basis of the activity that give rise to the cost. So, uh, in, an, in an environmental accounting context, it, it, ex, uh, it distinguishes between env environmental related costs which can be attributed to the joint cost centers and environmental driven costs which tend to be hidden on general overheads. Um, so that's the uh, basic explanation on the activity-based costing. Uh, so basically, all of these techniques are used to allocate environmental costs. So next, I will uh, pass to Azamuddin to further explain on the types of environmental costs 
which um, show you on the overall idea of what is environmental cost actually. Five tiers of environmental cost. First, conventional cost. Conventional cost is direct cost that associated with capital expenditure, raw materials, and other operating and maintenance costs. This type of cost can be found in the most of organization and normally captured by engineering economic evaluation. However, this cost may not be reported in the form that can be readily used by the management to determine the organization environmental expenditure. For example, cost of purchasing equipment and plants that will prevent environmental impact. Next, hidden costs. Hidden costs can be found in the accounting system of the organization. These costs might be difficult to identify and recognize because often hidden in various overhead accounts such as cost of wage and salaries and utilities. This will make it difficult for management to identify opportunities to cut the environmental costs. It also includes the cost of monitoring and reporting of environmental activities to comply with regulations. After that, contingent costs. These costs may be incurred in future and frequently limited to costs arise from existing legal activities. Costs that may be recognized within the organization internal report. It also being disclosed in the notes to the financial statements and included in external report of the organization if the organization fails to pin up any fine and penalties for non-compliance with regulation. Example of contingent cost is cost of remedy and compensity for future accidental release of substances into the environment. Relationship and image cost is also one of the five tiers of environmental cost. This cost reflects the perception of various stakeholders, which are rarely measured in standard information system and difficult to measure objectively. It also less tangible costs and benefits that relate to consumer perception and employee and community relations. There are being tangible because of the direct benefit that resulted from the relationship or image expense. For example, is cost of preparing environmental reports and cost incurred voluntarily for environmental activities. Lastly, societal costs, the cost that organization impose on others such as the environment and society. They may not be held legally responsible and cannot be compensated in the legal system. It is difficult to recognize and measure because the cost of estimating the impacts and the specialized environment knowledge that might be need to do so. For example, cost of natural resources such as river, lake, atmosphere. Hi, I'm Yana. Let's continue with benefits of EMA. The benefits is categorized in several levels which are at corporate level, industry level, and government level, and also society level. So, let's go through one by one. As you can see here is benefits of EMA at corporate level. First, better regulatory compliance. When the company are running an EMA, it will help ensure that the environmental legal obligations are fulfilled and handled more effectively on a day-to-day -day basis. And for the second point is more effective use of resources. Companies will have policies and procedures in place that will help them more effectively manage waste and resources. When resources are more effectively used, it also can reduce cost at the same time. The third benefits of EMA at corporate level is marketing. In marketing, the company highlights the credentials of its business as an environmentally conscious operation that has committed itself to continuous environmental improvement through advertising or annual reporting. And the last point is finance. EMA will help the company find it easier for banks and other financial institutions to raise investment which are increasingly keen to see companies managing their environmental impact. 
Okay, let's proceed with benefits of EMA at industry level. The industry are able to monitor and manage energy and material use and flows more accurately, including volumes, types, and fate of pollution or waste. Next, the industry is also able to identify, estimate, allocate, and manage or reduce costs more accurately. It also more reliable and detailed environmental performance assessment and reporting information, thus enhancing the reputation of the organization with stakeholders such as consumers, local communities, staff, government and finance providers in the industry. And there are few benefits of EMA at government level that we need to know. Industry implementation of the EMA could improve the efficiency of current government policies or regulations by exposing the true environmental costs and benefits of such policies or regulations to enterprises. Besides that, the government can use EMA data from industry to estimate and report financial and environmental performance metrics in voluntary programs for government stakeholders such as regulated industries or industry partner. Uh, industry EMA data may also be used for regional or national accounting purposes and to inform government per program uh, or policy design. The last benefits of EMA is at society level. Less pollution, happy society is the greatest flexibility to keep the environment cleaner and greener can result in reducing the environmental impact, which will increase the happiness and satisfaction of the surrounding community, including shareholders. And it also may strengthen the relationship with the supplier, when doing business, the preferences between the people and the organization with which they do business will now begin to take into the account. Maintaining a sustainable atmosphere during business activities will enable third parties to participate in and maintain business partnership for a long period of time. Okay, last but not least, promote efficient usage of materials by using 3R, reduce, reuse, recycle, which will further reduce waste costs incurred by the operation. Society can appreciate more if the operation emphasizes effective use of content. Not only can a reduction in the waste produced by the operation be financially lucrative, it can also become a great selling point. Okay, this is the end of our video for EMA. We really hope that you understand and enjoy watching our video. Any inquiries regarding this topic, you may ask us later. So, that's all from us. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.